My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. And today I wanna to talk about a few different things. I wanna make three points about this uh, mass shooting in Buffalo. And after that, I wanna finish with an acknowledgement. I'm telling you that now, because when I do the major part of the show, if you want, you can cut out, and you don't have to be there for the acknowledgement. So as most people know, uh, on May 14th, 2022, there was a mass shooting in Buffalo. And just keeping with the facts for now, 10 people were killed, three were injured, and there were 11 victims. I mean, 11 victims were black. Now let's talk about the shooter. No surprise here. He was young, he was 18 years old, he was male, and he was white. He identified himself as a white supremacist, as an anti-Semite, he believed in replacement theory. We could go over this more at another show, but basically it kind of means that he believes, like a lot of people do that are in the white supremacy movement, that white people are going to be replaced by minorities. Uh, this individual, he was able to legally buy a gun, although it did seem like he had mental health issues and there were definite uh, red flags. But that's for another show to talk about that. So what can I really add to this story that hasn't been said? And I really wanna be honest and upfront here because hasn't this story been mentioned a thousand times over the last however many years? So in order to fix the problem, we have to be honest right up front. So that's where I'm gonna take a stand, so to speak. So to be honest, there are no amount of deaths that can be too much in this country. We're too invested in the idolization of guns. We can have a mass shooting, a mass murderous every single day in this country and nothing's gonna change. And how do we know that? Because sometimes we hear about these mass shootings and sometimes we don't. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have a mass shooting in this country like every two to three days now. So nothing is going to change until we admit the fact that we just don't care. The only thing that's really going to happen is we're going to have a little bit of a talk. Somebody's going to mention how it's video games that are doing it. And somebody's going to say, yeah, that's the problem. Meanwhile, video games, the, the popularity for video games is <laughs> it's hugely popular all around the world. Even in like say Japan, where there was only like three shootings all of last year. So that's, that's a joke. We're gonna talk about that and it means nothing. Then we're gonna throw out some thoughts and prayers. That's gonna mean nothing. And we're just gonna to toss this ball back and forth and then there's gonna be more and more mass shootings and killings and murders and hate crimes. Let's just be honest, we don't care. Domestic terrorism from white supremacy has been increasing since Obama was president. Now, we'll give you one guess. Why do you think that is? Because Obama's black, right? So white supremacy crimes have been increasing since that time, and they've been snowballing since our former president, and it's continuing. Do we really want to take a look at this? I don't know if we want to have an honest look at it. There's politicians, pundits, conservatives, Republicans, they're pushing this. This is like racism on steroids. And meanwhile, their, their ratings go up. They don't go down. Like, it's insane. So, like, do we really care? You know, this Nazi fascist propaganda that's being pushed. We've got uh, women losing their rights. Do we care? I know some women care. I've talked to them. But listen, women take up about 51% of the population. Why am I not seeing women out on the streets? What, why are we able to have these problems happening without people pushing back? It's because these Nazi propagandists, these extreme right-wingers, white supremacists, they, they feel emboldened because nobody's really pushing back that hard. So we need to be honest about that. So two things, we don't care about gun deaths. 
And we don't much care about racism either. So that's two things. The other thing I want to challenge today is the term white supremacy. We keep using that term, and I think that actually makes these people stronger. You know, there's young people out there going, hmm, I want to be supreme. I want to be part of that. I can get in that group. And it's like, listen, let's talk truth of what it is, because words are very powerful. Words are important. Let's look at the definition of supremacy. State of being superior. State of having power, having authority, being masterful. Is that what white supremacists are? It sounds more like they, uh, they're aspiring for that, but they don't have that. They're the exact opposite of that. If you think you're a supreme being, why would you arm yourself to the gills and have tactical gear and go face off against a bunch of vulnerable people? You don't mow down people in supermarkets or the streets with a gun against unarmed people because you think you're superior. It makes no sense. If you thought you were really physically superior, go join a Brazilian jiu-jitsu dojo. Have a fight there. Go take a boxing class if you're so superior. Go into a bodybuilding contest. We'll see how superior you are. If you're mentally superior, go to college. Test your brain there. See if you can become a doctor or a lawyer or something of value, of importance. Don't take a gun and start shooting people. <laughs> That's the exact opposite of thinking you're superior. You know you're inferior. So let's have a talk about that. What's the opposite of supremacy? Well, it would be inferiority. It would be impotence. It would be incompetence. So instead of calling these people white supremacists, why don't we call them what they are? So we don't have all these copycat killers that go, yeah, I want to be a supremacist too. You know, let's call it what it is. There was an 18-year-old incompetent, impotent, inferior boy, child, emotionally, that decided to lash out and throw a tantrum. You know, they, is that something to aspire to? You know, maybe that would help. Let's call it what it is. Let's be truthful. If you were superior, you would love yourself. These people don't love themselves. They hate themselves, but they project. People who are truly valuable, masterful, and actually have power, they don't take out their hate and ignorance on other people. They want other people to be happy. They take pleasure in other people's happiness. People who are masterful tend to be happy human beings. This is a joke. This whole part about them being so violent and angry and hating other human beings for the color of their skin, this says nothing about the love that they have for themselves and think that they're superior. It's an absolute admission that they know that they suck at life and they're not willing to work hard enough. So they don't want to be looked at as an individual. They want to say, oh, my white skin is an achievement because they have not been able to achieve anything else and they don't have the guts and courage to try to fail at something. Because when you try to succeed, you're gonna fail more often than, than not. You have to have courage to do that. You have to have a spine to do that. You have to have testicular fortitude to do that. They have none of that, none. So let's take a look at this because I don't think we should ever use the term white supremacy anymore. I think we should use the term white White impotence, white fragility. There was a person with a gun who was claiming to be uh, whatever, and we know he's a white, fragile, pathetic man. Let's just put it like that. Or I came up with something else. Let's call them white supreme racists. Let's try that. Do you really think that they're superior? Because I have a psychological profile of these white supreme racists. And what you're going to find is they're nothing close to being superior. Nothing. So let's start off with this. Racism is correlated to a low IQ. Racism is correlated to low emotional intelligence. Racism is a defensive, defense mechanism against insecurity, anxiety, ignorance, inadequacy, and insignificance. Racism is also correlated to entitlement, 
narcissism, paranoia, lack of psychological maturity, inability to properly integrate into society. Does this sound masterful and supreme to you? No. We've got to stop calling them white supremacists. They're white losers. Plain and simple. Profile of a white supreme racist. They have a lack of individual identity and lack of individual purpose, which leads to selective empathy for their in-group, which usually means white skin, somebody with a penis, and someone who's heterosexual. Like, that's some type of achievement. You're born with that, man. Like, you're gonna brag? Yeah, I was born that. You got nothing. That's because you've achieved nothing in your life. Also leads to selective hostility, usually for the out-group, which is everybody else. So let's talk about this real quick. There are people in this world who are unfortunately for themselves and for the people around them, they're born with like a relative inability to have empathy for others. Okay, but this is worse. This is selective empathy and selective hostility. This means that they are using anger and aggression and hate for, to boost themselves in some way, but it's selective and chosen that's what makes it more dangerous. I would much rather have a person that I know that was born with a, a limited capacity for empathy. You know, there are people like this, you know, sometimes you know, you'll get somebody who has autism and they have a limited capacity. I, I get that. That's the, there's, there's no real issue there. You can work around that. But to have a person who is deliberately malicious, that is so much worse. So here's the myth. They keep saying, that they're so supreme that they believe in rugged individualism. What? Why am I the only one that's challenging this? Because that, that makes no sense. Here's the truth. They hide in groups. They derive their power from being in the group. And again, they believe their white skin and being a heterosexual male is an achievement. That's not based on individual talent. Where did you get this idea that they were rugged individualists? Because the fact is, is that when you suck at life and you're emotionally immature and you don't have any talent and you're not doing anything to manifest any value in yourself, of course you're going to look and go, okay, my skin is white because you haven't done anything. It's not rugged individualism. Not at all. It's the opposite of that once again. And let's finish with this. A profile of a white supreme racist they project their psychological flaws and personal failings onto other groups to avoid their own personal responsibility. And they like to weaponize their own victim mentality. Therefore, they end up being experts at scapegoating and they do this so they don't have to acknowledge their own incompetence. And these are my truths. Um, I can go over it real quick. Number one, if you want to fix a problem, admit the fact that we don't really care that much about mass shootings in this country. Admit the fact that we don't care enough about racism in this country. And why are we not challenging this thought of white supremacy? Because they're exactly the opposite of that. They're not supreme in any way, shape, or form. And we need to say it, and we need to write it, we need to talk about it. We need to put it out there. We need to shame them for thinking that they're supreme by acting that way. So that's the show, 14 minutes long. Um, I do want to finish with an acknowledgement. So I'm saying this now. So if you want to go, you can go because what I'm going to say now has absolutely nothing to do with the show that I just did. I just feel like it's uh, necessary. So I'm going to start right now. Um, I'm thankful for everybody who's here and who subscribes to my channel. I have about 6,000 subscribers. As you notice in the shows, if you do listen to them often, uh, I get very few comments, but um, I do read them all and I do try to comment back. Uh, one person named Stephanie, she has been commenting on every single show I've ever done and I completely appreciate that. Uh, last week, she did not comment 
on the show, and I thought that was out of character. Uh, this week, this week her family contacted me and informed me that uh, Stephanie Stephanie passed away. And although I don't know a lot about her, um, I, I do feel very appreciative that she um, w reached out to me on every single show and she found value in, in what I do and what I say. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, what I do know about Stephanie she basically cared mostly about two things in her life. Uh, she cared about her husband. She wanted to be a really great wife. And she cared about... her son. And so she wanted to be a really great mother. And in those capacities, she definitely um, fulfilled everything to the best of her ability. And she was great at both. Um, I know her as a really great, caring person who supported me. I just want to offer my condolences to um, her family. And I guess that's all I have to say for today. Um, my name is Joe Peroni. This is the Rise Above Project. If you find any of this valuable, please subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you.